Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our worship service this morning. Today is the last Sunday of End Times, also the last Sunday of the church year, and a Sunday called Christ the King Sunday. So the church year ends today with a lasting song of triumph for Christ our King. The promise is sure. We will live with him in his kingdom, rejoicing in his goodness and resting in his eternal peace forever. We follow the order of service found on uh, page 60 in the front of your hymnary, known as Rite 2. We begin our service this morning with our opening hymn, hymn 536. Lord bless your worship this morning. Gladly that our guilt has borne and cancelled it by dying. Hence cheerfully may we with thee take up our cross and bear it till we relief inherit. We wait for thee here thou hast won our hearts to and duty, but while our spirits feel thee near, our eyes would see thy beauty. We fain would be at rest with thee in peace and joy supernal, in glorious life eternal. We wait for thee soon. So do rejoice and long for thine appearing. O oh, blissed will be when thee we see homeward bringing with transport and with singing. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. Let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort you in your heart by his holy absolution and strengthen you by his sacraments that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you. We glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord, you only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, our Most High, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth will proclaim your King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the 23rd chapter of the Old Testament book of, uh, prophet, uh, uh, of prophet Jeremiah, beginning with the second verse. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherd who shepherds my people. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not taken care of them. But I will certainly take care of you because of the evil things that you have done, declares the Lord. 
I will gather what is left of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their pastures. They will be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Listen, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, who will reign wisely as king and establish justice and righteousness on earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. This is his name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Here ends our first lesson. We continue by singing our psalm for today, found on page 5 in your service folder, Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of singing. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done marvelous things. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Colossians, beginning with the 13th verse. The Father rescued us from the, dom the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and all things hold together in him. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that in all things he might have the highest rank. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Here ends our second lesson. Please rise. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia. 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 Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from the, uh, the 23rd chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke beginning with the 35th verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. The people stood watching. 
the rulers were ridiculing him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also made fun of him. Coming up to him, they offered him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also, there was also an inscription written above, above him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there was blaspheming him, saying, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? We are punished justly, for we are getting what we deserve and for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Amen, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Here ends the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, O Lord. We confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, 101.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 41 through 44, which we will read in Jesus' name. Please rise. Jesus sat down opposite the offering box and was watching how the crowd put money into it. Many rich people put in large amounts. One poor widow came and put two small bronze coins worth less than a penny. He called his disciples together and he said to them, Amen, I tell you, this poor widow put more into the offering box than all the others. For they all gave out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. Here ends our text. We pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Your friends, fellow redeemed in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Christ our King. A 1970s era Volkswagen van was faded paint is chugging along in the right lane of a freeway going 10 miles under the posted speed limit. A car full of college students returning to school take a glance and they zip by in the left lane. What they see is a rusting old vehicle that appears barely roadworthy and borderline hazardous. As they complete the pass, they look at each other and they wince. A second car passed by, driven by a retiree and his wife. They also glance at the vintage vehicle, but they see something entirely different. Just for a fleeting moment, they're transported back into time. In their minds, they see the first officially designated family car that they bought with the silhouettes of three little heads in the two back seats. And they're going on a family vacation. As they complete the pass, they look at each other with a knowing smile. An old VW minibus or a discarded piece of art at a rummage sale that one person walks by and another person snatches up? How can the same thing create such a different response and elicit such a different reaction? Here's how. And it's as the old saying goes, it's all in the eye of the beholder. And that's a useful thought for us to hang on to on this Christ the King Sunday. It keeps in mind because we're, we're going to see this play out a couple of times as we consider the incident that we just read in Mark chapter 12. And the first thing we want to focus on from this lesson is the speaker, Jesus Christ. Our text took place on Holy Week. Tuesday of Holy Week. And let's briefly review what went on that week. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rose triumphantly into uh, Jerusalem. That, that was two days before our text. The day before, Mon the day before our text, Monday, uh, Jesus did something that he has also done at the very beginning of his ministry. He filled with righteous indignation and he cleanses a portion of the temple area. He overturns tables. He makes very clear the religious leaders had turned into a marketplace what God intended to be sacred. It was a scene. It was quite a scene. It was quite a stir that he made in the temple courts. On the day of our text, though, Jesus taught that the people 
he taught the people and confronted the religious leaders. And the next day, Wednesday, he was probably the day that Judas arranged to deliver Jesus into the hands of the same religious leaders that Jesus called out the day before. On Thursday, Jesus celebrated the Passover, the Last Supper, with his disciples. And on Friday, the events we heard in our gospel lesson took place. So let's talk about that for a minute or two. While hanging on the cross, people mocked and ridiculed him. Was it the first? First, it was the crowd. And then it was the church leaders. Then it was the soldiers. Then Pontius Pilate. And finally, one of the criminals. What did they see in Jesus? Revolutionary? A political and religious agitator? The latest cut-like figure who was developing a small following but then got a little too big for his britches? A failed idealist? who had crossed the wrong people and was now paying the price? Probably the easiest question, or the easier question to answer is what they didn't see in Jesus. And what they didn't see in Jesus was anything remotely close to him being a king. But of course we do. Because remember, it's all in the eye of the beholder. And we view him through the eyes of faith that have been created, that has been created within us by the Holy Spirit. Jesus told us many times in Scripture that he is not the kind of king who will magically use his power to dismiss all earthly problems and trials. Rather, he is a spiritual king who has dismissed us from the eternally damning consequences of our own sin and reversed, uh, reserved a place for us in heaven. And we know what it took. It wasn't a king's ransom. It was Christ the king himself. Him for us. Him in our place. It was not the nails that held Jesus to that cross. It was the sheer force of his love for each and every one of us that kept him there until he cried out those wonderful words, it is finished. My kingdom is not of this world, he explained to Pontius Pilate. His and ours is a spiritual kingdom. And as we heard once again in our gospel lesson, that kingdom, which is ours now and will be forever, is called paradise. Now the practical benefit heaven has for us now is simply knowing that it's coming. And it will come. A fact that we have repeatedly been hearing in our end time scripture lessons these last few weeks. Having that to look forward to may not make the difficulties of this life any less difficult, but it does make them easier to bear. Because this world and what's happening to us is not all that there is. Friends, paradise awaits us. So on this Christ the King Sunday, we see Jesus for who he really is. Our Lord, our Redeemer, our Savior, and our King. Which means that everything he utters is a royal decree and worthy of our devout attention. And he is about to give us a lesson. Which takes us back to the second focus of our text today. There on Tuesday in the temple area, we're told Jesus sat down opposite the offering box and was watching how the crowd put money into it. Many rich people put a large amounts, 
One poor widow came and put in two small bronze coins worth less than a penny. Now Jesus watched the crowd. He watched them putting their money into the temple treasury. And although this was a required temple tax each year, the temple back then was generally funded by the same way that the church is funded today. By the voluntary gifts and offerings of God's people. So what did Jesus see? Well, he saw people freely giving of their wealth. Well, that doesn't seem to be all that surprising. After all, Jesus once said, from everyone who has been given, much more will be demanded, and from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So Jesus saw the people who had been blessed with financial means honoring God through their generous offerings. But that's not all he saw. He saw a woman simply described as a poor widow. That she was labeled poor reminds us that there were no safety, social safety nets. The fact that she was a widow indicated that she likely did not have much support and was probably reliant on the kindness of other family members, if she had any. In other words, she didn't have much. But what she had, she gave. So, what the casual observer, including Jesus' disciples and followers, would have seen was a single woman of very little means making a meager offering. This would have known the amount, they wouldn't have known the amount that she dropped in the treasury or her personal financial wealth, net worth or, or the impact her gift might have going forward. But what they knew, would have known or easily surmised is that the temple relied on people like her for its internal upkeep and service. It would have become insolvent long ago if it wasn't for people like her. And that's what the casual observer may have seen. But remember, in all of this, are seen through the eyes of the beholder. And in this case, the beholder is Jesus Christ. He called his disciples together and he said to them, Amen, I tell you, this poor widow put more into the offering box than all the others, for they all gave out their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. I wish I knew more about this woman. This woman who is commended by Jesus. What can we surmise about her actions in Jesus' response? Well, she was an unassuming, unassuming, but devoted child of God. She portrays herself as someone who loved her Lord. And without fanfare or with desi out desire for recognition, lived a life of a quiet, reverent faith. But perhaps more importantly, she exemplifies for us something, someone who trusted that her Lord would do as he promised. Watch over her and keep her. She trusted that she would give him all that she had to live on. Not as a strategy to see if God would come through or test to see if she really loved, if he really loved her, but with the quiet confidence that her Lord would never abandon her. Using the terminology of this Sunday, she, she showed herself to be a loyal subject of Christ the King. And what we learn from her and from Jesus' response to her is a simple truth. It's not the amount of the gift that matters, but it's the heart 
of the giver. And the heart of this giver beat with great gratitude and trust. It's not the lesson that Jesus specifically, is it not the lesson that Jesus specifically wanted his disciples, and of course us, to know? We don't have a designated temple tax here at Holton. We don't have church dues that we arbitrarily set for our people and expect them to meet and then remind them if they don't. But what we do have is Christ the King. Christ the crucified. Christ the risen. Christ the ascended. Christ the ever-living, ever-loving, ever-watching. Christ the faithful promise keeper. Like the widow, our hearts beat with gratitude for him and trust in him. And one small way in which we can tangibly express our gratitude and our trust is through our stewardship. So the great stewardship lesson that Jesus, that Jesus gives us today is to remember that he is not interested in our money. He is interested in our hearts. Through his life, his death, his resurrection, he has proven himself worthy to be the king of our hearts in every area of our lives. Which means we consider our offerings of time, talents, and treasures, our life of Christian stewardship, not in terms of forced obligation or a grudging sense of duty necessary to keep our place, to keep this place running. Rather, we view Christian stewardship as an expression of gratitude for trust in our Lord. Trust in Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. In other words, what Christian stewardship is, is what it isn't, and what it isn't is all in the eyes of the beholder. And each and every day, we, as Christ's disciple, behold Christ the King. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we faithfully remember the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. We praise you for his victorious resurrection from the dead. We thank you for the strength of grace and majesty of faith which he bestows on the church by virtue of his ascension to your right hand, where he intercedes for us as our advocate and high priest. Grant that the Holy Spirit will gather us into the company of all the faithful from the ends of the earth, so that we may celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In your mercy, receive our prayers. Deliver us and preserve us. To, alone, to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We bring our offering forward.
We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone. Trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly, as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. We continue on page 72 with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let, uh, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord Almighty, Father everlasting God, who with you are only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the, the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy our God of Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. In the highest. Dear friends in Christ, in order that you may receive this holy sacrament worthily, it is good that you consider what you must now believe and do. From the words of Christ, this is my body which is given for you. This is my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. You should believe that Jesus Christ himself is present with his body and blood. As the words declare, from Christ's words for the remission of sins, you should believe that Jesus Christ bestows upon you his body and blood to confirm unto you the forgiveness of all your sins. And finally, you should do as Christ commands when he says, take, eat. Drink of it, all of you, and this do in remembrance of me. If you believe these words of Christ and do as he therein has commanded, then you have rightly examined yourself and may worthily eat Christ's body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. You should also unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift. And should love one another with a pure heart and thus with the whole Christian church have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may God the Father grant you his grace through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, 
Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, upon us. may be seated, and you may come forward in the direction of ushers, for all things are now ready.
Please rise as we sing the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now you let that your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation as you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to light and the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be forevermore. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through these salutary gifts, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to, to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. May be seated, we sing our, our final hymn, 593. Good morning to all of you once again. A um, couple of announcements. Um, the, uh, uh, the deacons are to meet today um, at 11.30 after the service, or excuse me, after the time for Bible class. Um, and um, also we have our Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving pie sale pickup this week. Uh, it will be on Wednesday uh, from 2 to 7. If you ordered a pie, please make sure that you come and pick them up. Each pie uh, is $10. Also that day, at that time, from 2 to 7, will be our Holden Community Blood Drive here at the church. Uh, donors, you can sign up with uh, uh, Versity uh, and uh, online, or um, you can also... Uh, just you can also show up and they do they do take walk-ins as well uh, Thanksgiving services this week will be held on uh, Thursday November 
um, 24th at 9.30 a.m., and then we will not have the evening service. Um, so th uh, it will be uh, the, the morning service that day. Um, the noisy offering is next week. Monies will go towards the Parsonage re uh, Renovation Fund. Um, and we have a special offering today and next week. Um, they'll help cost the cover of the, our new uh, microphone that is used for picking all of you up here. Um, the, uh, so that's what the, the special offering is for. Um, the ladies' advent by candlelight service is November 27th at 6 o'clock. That's um, uh, coming up next week. Uh, the... Um, All the members are invited to help decorate, excuse me, for um, Christmas on Tuesday, November 29th at five o'clock. Pizza supper will be provided. And also our, our bazaar is coming up here soon, so uh, please have those items in by uh, Wednesday, November 30th. Um, you can read over all the other announcements uh, for yourself. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, the council, uh, if the council could meet, where, where do you want? Over in the school building. Okay, if the council could meet uh, for a, a quick proposal of the budget, um, and uh, so that you can look over it. Um, but anyway, uh, that will be directly after the service, over in the school building. In the office, is that where you want to meet? Okay, in the office. Anything else? that, we'll have our Sunday school teachers and students go first. And until we meet again, may God's blessings be with all of you.